This is an overview of how I use Fathom Analytics to develop strategies. So firstly, how I will use the statistics and the metrics to come up with goals I could adopt. And secondly, how I will use this dashboard to then monitor progress towards those goals. So first of all, what I do is just go through the statistics and look at things that are unusually high or unusually low. Uh, so things that surprise me, basically. Let's start off at the top and the headline stats. I can see straight away that my bounce rate is really high, 82%. Don't like that. That means 82% of visitors are just visiting one page and they're leaving, which kind of concerns me. But very often, I think um, a single metric on its own doesn't really give you much. It doesn't tell you the whole story. So I want to combine that with other metrics here and see if I can understand more about what's going on. And if I look at what's next to it, average time on site, 1 minute 48. That's much more than I'd expect. And so that kind of tells me that people are coming to the site. Yes, they're only really staying on one page, but they're staying on that page for a really long time. Uh, so I'm, that makes me not too worried. And when I think about my site and the content of it, it's actually um, about wristwatches and it's a, quite a technical site. And so I think what people are doing is they're coming to my site for information on a particular model. They're reading and watching some em embedded videos. They're getting a lot of information. They've got what they need and then they go. And so if that's their purpose and they're achieving what they set out to achieve on my website, I think I'm okay with that. It would be nice to uh, reduce the bounce rate, but I'm going to think about some other goals. And currently, I don't think this one is going to be my priority. Let's look down at some other statistics and see what, what jumps out. So if I look at referrers on the right hand side here, um, yep, search engines uh, in particular, one at the top, not surprising, and search engines. And then I think, well, pretty much everything is a search engine. Even YouTube, is, you could arguably say, is a, a search engine. The watch site is a watch, uh, not surprisingly, a watch uh, specialist site. And that's all organic links coming in. But everything else, pretty much search. So that tells me that although the SEO looks like it's working, I need to work on my backlink uh, campaign, get more backlinks, I think, coming in. Um, again, it's now up to me to decide how much of a priority that is. But... This is one way where the metrics here are giving me an idea for a goal that I could uh, aim for. Going on to the left hand side and the individual pages that uh, people visit and not much surprising here. Um, one thing that it's telling me is that there's not a huge difference between the individual pages. So I don't have one page that is just way more successful than everything else and that's okay. I've got a lot of sort of data pages and so there's quite a long tail there. Um, which is, you know, what I, I aimed for when I built the site. If I flick through, um, yeah, nothing really surprising. But one thing I do look out for, and we can see it here, is where one column is much lower than another one, in particular entries and, and visitors or entries and views. So 11 visits to this particular page here um, were when people first came to the website on this page. And yet this page got um, quite a high number of visitors and views compared to how many people actually landed on it. In other words, not many people arrived at this page, but quite a few people clicked on this page once they were on the website. So what that tells me is that yeah, people kind of have an interest in this page, but they don't find it through search engines. They don't land on it. So maybe I could uh, work on the SEO for this particular page. Um, if we look further down, the demographics is useful, um, yes, for considering goals, but also in, in my case, I've used this for when I'm actually developing the site and in particular, the devices on the left-hand side. I expected it would be 50-50 desktop mobile, maybe desktop a bit more because it's quite a technical audience, but roughly two thirds of my audience are coming on mobile devices, phones and tablets. So. Since I sort of discovered this, I've switched my development to focus on mobile first. So I'll change the um, sort of environment I use so that I see a, a mock-up of the mobile site as I'm developing rather than desktop first. And then I'll make sure it works on desktop as well, obviously. Um, finally, we've got events and campaigns. The events in particular have been useful for me. Again, I look for any kind of very high or very low um, numbers and 
events are things that you have to set up individually and they monitor engagement or interaction. Effectively, they count clicks in the way I've set them up. And the conversion rate for this one was much higher than I expected. What this is, is it counts clicks to PDF downloads of technical guides. I've also got PDF uh, downloads of instruction manuals, and yet the technical guides were much higher than anything else. So one, it tells me that my audience love PDF downloads for the technical guides, but also that tells me that they're a very technical audience, much more technical than I thought. So that now sort of influences the work I do on the rest of the content on the site. I may want to set myself a goal based on this. In fact, I did right at the beginning when I saw this was relatively high right at the start. I then kind of stopped everything and just made sure I've got links to as many technical PDFs as possible on the site, keeping them relevant, of course. Okay, so those are the way that I look at metrics and then decide on goals. So how do I actually measure them? Well, if we stay with this example of the, the PDF downloads, I basically just look at the figure and see if it improves after I've added more of that thing. So as I said, I first saw this relatively high, I think it was about four or five percent a couple of months ago. I sort of doubled down on that. I found more links to technical guides, I added those, and I've seen the conversion rate increase to eight percent. So clearly that has been the right thing to do, that has worked. Another um, goal that I had, and then I use these metrics to measure it, was um, launching on product hunt so i made what i hoped would be a popular a pdf it's a, a watch selling checklist a checklist for if you want to sell your watch secondhand and i made it as a pdf and i made it as a sort of interactive page and then i put it on product hunt i just wanted to give it a try because i thought that would be a new audience for my site i added the um relevant parameters here so that it would be um, captured in this campaign section and as you can see it didn't do very well uh, this is actually, I think, over a month ago. So it's only showing one within the last month. But even if I go and look at, um, let's do the whole year, shall we? Uh, there we go. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> Nine visits uh, since I launched it a couple of months ago. Um, and I think half of those are all my friends. So, okay, that failed. But I learned something. I learned not to waste time on Product Hunt. I think it's very, very useful for some uh, areas, some categories, but for wristwatch websites, maybe not so much. So that's good. It tells me you know, to focus my uh, energy elsewhere. And one other thing that I did, I am based in Japan and the, the website is about Japanese watches, in particular Seiko. So it kind of makes sense that Japan could be an important audience. I did get some traffic from Japan and so I tried translating part of the website into Japanese. That's something I've been doing recently. And I'm going to go back to the last 30 days. I first of all did just a few pages and then looked once the search engines had picked up my new pages in Japanese. I then saw if there was any, any increase. There was, so I translated much more of the site. And if I just look at traffic, from Japan, I click on that, that becomes a filter. I go to the top and now I can see only visits from Japan. And as you can see, it's um, really made a difference. I had very little traffic before and you can see exactly where the search engine started to pick up my first few translated pages. I then increased that and I've since been slowly increasing the translations more. So yeah, that seems to be working. It's something I'm gonna continue and also maybe translate into other languages. When I think about which languages to work on next, again, I can go back to using these metrics to help me set a goal. So I'm going to go down, look at the countries and look for the next non-English speaking country, uh, Indonesia. Well, um, Germany, Italy, France. Okay, so I've got a nice little selection. They're all fairly close together um, of other countries that might be useful for me to translate my language to target. So there you go. That's how I use the Fathom Analytics dashboard to decide on goals, think about strategy, and also to measure the progress as well as I go along. Hope that was useful for you. Thank you for watching.